now we're back in the studio and we once again have the analytics team with us. But first, uh, we got one question on Twitter. Uh, why do you think that the Moscow University of Technology and Science is not working on problem C? We Which actually do. We do think they're working on problem C. That's yeah. what we think they're doing. <laughs> they're working on problem C. So that was that question. Okay, what are you going to show us? So we prepared three new problems that we haven't shown before. And the one we will start with is a problem G called minimum cost flow. And this is actually an inside joke because uh, minimum cost flow is an algorithmic technique that has been used in world fairness problems before. But actually, it's just a joke. If, when the judges tell you this, then you can expect the solution to be completely different, which is also the case. But the problem does actually deal with a kind of a flow. What we have is a, junk, uh, is a network of pipes, which are these lines. And so, uh, on, in the network, there are some junctions. Uh, for simplicity, they are drawn as circles, but you can imagine them really small. And what we want to do is we want to start, we have a large body of water somewhere, and we want to push this water into the start node and we want it to reach the end node. There are two possible obstacles. One of them is we have to push the water with a uh, high enough pressure for it to reach the required altitude. And the other obstacle is that some of those junctions contain holes. So you cannot simply start pushing water into this network because what would happen? The water would leak through the holes. To deal with the holes, you have two different options. One of them is you can plug the holes and this has some small cost of doing. The other option, which may be better in some cases, is you can buy new pipes and connect two of the holes with a new pipe. This is one of the things we have to realize before we can actually solve this task, is that the problem constraints make sure uh, it is of always uh, cheaper to buy two plugs than it is to buy a pipe between two holes. So we have to have a re really good reason to do so. And now the actual algorithm that solves this problem works as follows. So the minimum pressure that makes sense is the pressure necessary for the water to reach the altitude, which is the maximum of the altitude of the start or the end. If, and if this is not the correct pressure, then the correct pressure has to be one of the other options which are above. And only, we only have to consider the pressure necessary to reach one of the nodes that are both about start and the end. So we can start by trying all possibilities for the water pressure. And now once we have fixed the water pressure, we can forget every, everything about this level. And what we will get is a set of connected components of the graph. And uh, we are starting in one of them. We want to bring the water to another one or maybe the same one. And it turns out that this then uh, produces a shortest path problem or the problem to find the cheapest way of reaching the node end from the node start in this network where traveling within a component is for free. And when, uh, when we are traveling to a new component, you have to pay for the pipe to the new component and also to plug all the holes except for two in the new component. Okay, have you seen some interesting errors on this problem? Some interesting? Uh, there are not really, no, no real tricky test cases for this one. Well, it's, there may be some depending on the algorithmic approach, but many of the test cases, for instance, the test case where you have one component with just a single hole. So th this gets solved by uh, simply uh, the fact that you can, uh, it, it's never optimal to go to this hole and from the hole again somewhere else because you can just take a shortcut so many, for, for some coding approaches, there will be no special cases here, but still the code is pretty long. There is a lot of code to write, a lot of places to make several mistakes. So I think many, uh, many teams make mistakes if they submit this task, but uh, the, the mistakes are not the same for all of them. Okay, and we only got so far two s teams that solve this problem. So it seems to be a very hard problem. Indeed. Um, okay, let's move on. Okay. Uh, to uh, problem F, keys. Um, so this is also one of, one of the trickier problems, but we have had uh, two solutions, I think, so far. Um, and 
what it is is a bit of a puzzle actually. So Adam, he has a set of uh, keys attached to rings like this, and he has uh, from A to Z rings and A to Z keys, and he wants to give uh, some of the keys to Brenda. So in this case, he wants to give this key R and this key N to Brenda. And after he has done this, both Adam and Brenda has to be able to carry their keys by just holding one of the rings or the keys, so they have to be connected. Uh, but we could actually, there could be some rings left over when we're done. That's allowed. Um, so, and we want to do this uh, with as few operations as possible. And an operation is either detaching a key from a ring or attaching a key, or uh, detaching a, to rings or attaching them. So this is what we're allowed to do. And we consider uh, removing and attaching a key to be a much uh, harder thing to do than with the, the rings themselves. So we want to minimize the number of key operations. And if there are solutions with the same number of key operations, we want to minimize the ring operations. Okay. Uh, so uh, we could end up with a solution like this, uh, where we, uh, so we have to move, uh, do two key operations. We remove key A from here and attach it to ring C and then we just attach ring B and ring C. So we have this state. And this would be a uh, solution in this case. Um, I think uh, there are uh, quite a few corner cases to consider here. <laughs> and once you've done, done that, this is sort of either uh, we've seen a dynamic programming solution for, for this. And actually, we've also seen a maximum flow solution. So <laughs> you can uh, set it up as a, this as a graph. Uh, and you can, so you're looking for a minimum cut in this graph, uh, which you can solve by the maximum flow algorithm. So we had minimum cost flow, but this is, would be maximum flow. Right. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's interesting. It looks very, I, I, I can't really see at all what the solution would be. This feels like a hard problem, but you said it was, right? Yes, uh, and it's only a few teams that has only, uh, only two so far. Yes, so that have solved it, and I think there yeah. are three teams that have uh, more teams that have uh, tried to solve it. Only two. Uh, yeah, only two. That's solved it. No, yes. two have solved and two have tried yes. without solving. Right. So there are quite a few corner cases here as well. Yeah. Okay. And the third problem. Yeah, the third problems for this session is one of those where the jury tr jury tries to trick you into thinking it's easy. <laughs> so this is problem L take over. And this has seen a lot of submissions, but very few of them correct. So let me once again first explain the problem and then go to the solution. In this problem, we have some companies, and each company is represented by an integer, which is like its size. And the companies are owned by two corporations. One of them, for instance, this is the example case. So one corporation owns three companies of sizes seven, one, and one. The other corporation owns two companies of sizes five and five. And the goal of both corporations, they're like playing a game, and each of them is trying to take over the other one. And this has to be done by, in turns, uh, by a company taking over another company. And so, so the corporations, like, when playing this game, take turns. And in each of the turns, the corporation has two, two possible options. One of them is uh, to take one of its companies and take over another one. And the other one, the, so this is like defense, and the other one is like offense. So take one of your companies and take over the a company of the opponent. So, and of course, this is where the sizes matter because the problem statement says that you can only take over a company if it's also, also yours or if it's sm strictly smaller. So you have to build up a larger company than your opponent does and to then to take over his companies. This is the, the entire idea of the game. And now, uh, but uh, it turns out it's quite tricky because there are many of ways that you can do. You can is it better to merge a large company with a small one and risk that will, the opponent will, t uh, will then kill it? Or is it better to like, merge smaller companies and have multiple companies that are not so small? 
So when we, when we see a problem like this, uh, we have to try to limit the number of options we have to try to prove a statement saying that it is never, never optimal to do this or it is in, it is a, there is always an optimal solution that does this or this or this. So in this case, the, there are some observations we can make. The proof is uh, quite tricky with some special cases, so I will just, just list the main idea. And one of them is uh, when you are taking over an opponent's company, you should always take over the largest company he has. And if, if he doesn't have, if he has a, such a large company that you cannot take it over at the moment, you shouldn't bother taking over any of these smaller ones because the, larger co the largest company is the danger and you have to defend against this danger. So if you, can't, if you, if you cannot take over opponent's largest company, you have to merge. And whenever you have to merge, it is always optimal to merge two of your, lar the, your largest two companies so that you create the company as large as possible. So once we have proved these two statements, this basically says that the entire game will look as follows. So I have a large, co my opponent has a larger company than I do. I will try to merge two of mine to beat him and then he will merge two of his and so on until somebody runs out of options and cannot produce an even larger company. And from this point on, the one with the largest company will then, in the subsequent turns, eat all of my companies and I will lose. So what happens in this case, the optimal strategy for the starting player, which is the one on the top, is to start by immediately attacking, eating one of these companies. This one has no, no, no options left, nothing to merge, so he passes and this one is the other company. So far so good, but there is once again, this task is not so simple. There is one tricky special case and many teams are failing this very special case uh, because for the entire game everything is set in stone but there is one place where, where the player has an option to decide what to do and this is the very first turn of the game. The first player can either merge, so defend or attack and uh, in a correct solution we have to try both of these possibilities. It is not enough to attack if you can so this shows an example where it is not enough to attack immediately. So if this one attacks immediately, kills one of the tens, the opponent will build, they'll build a company of size 20. This one may build the 21, but this one then builds a 30 and wins. But the optimal strategy is for this player to merge first, gives him a company of size 21, and even if the opponent merges as well, he cannot produce a larger company and then is defeated. So the optimal solution is for the very first move in the game, try both possibilities and then apply the greedy strategy. So I'm trying to beat my opponent and if I'm already larger than he is, then I attack. I'm a little bit surprised that this problem has that few solutions. It doesn't sound that hard, but I, I guess this special case is fairly tricky. Yeah, th this case is fairly hard to find and uh, we have seen many of the top teams failing on this task. And this only task. failing on that one. And that, that is the actual exact test case that the uh, judges have? Yeah, the actual test cases that are failing I look a little bit different. This one is crafted by my, me right now from memory, but also I think the problem authors and this, some other guys discussing this online have created similar special cases. Okay. So the people solving it back home, some of them already have noticed this case and the teams in the hall, well, some of them did, some of them didn't. <laughs> That's very interesting. Uh, thank you very much for, for explaining three more problems to us.